Since the release of the Galaxy Z Fold original, foldable phones have taken strides year on year. From the Xiaomi Mix Fold series, to the more recent Honor Magic V2, and last year's best foldable phone, the OnePlus Open, foldable phones have started to incorporate thin design, great build quality, and really fantastic cameras with some software sprinkled on top. In this review, I potentially discover that the Vivo X Fold 3 might just be an amalgamation of all of those factors, all rolled into one fantastic foldable device. Let's go. What's up, Average Dad fans? Yes, it is time for the Vivo X Fold 3 review. Not the Pro variant, the standard. And as always, there's five categories. Build quality, design, software, cameras, and price. Now, spoiler alert, the Vivo X Fold 3 might just be about to smash the points gathered by the OnePlus Open in its full review. But let's see. First category to discuss is build quality. Now, like most, if not all, modern foldable devices, build quality is no longer something that is going to give you sleepless nights awake. The rubbery, bubbled screen, the creaking folding mechanism, the awful crease that has sometimes hindered the viewing experience of all, those are things of the past. Heck, even the Samsung Z Fold 5 lost its rubbery screen and its massive crease crevice. So yeah, there's hope for us all. With the Vivo X Fold 3, all of the above is true. A near creaseless design with a carbon fibre hinge, an aluminium frame throughout, ultra-thin glass on the inner screen, reinforced Vivo glass on the outer. From head to toe and front to back, the build quality of this phone just feels premium. However, as always with foldable phones, there's a caveat. There's absolutely no dust resistance, but there's splash resistance. Yes, one of the only foldable phones to get any form of certified ingress protection is the Vivo X Fold 3, and it comes with IP4. Essentially, if you were to get caught in a tsunami or drop it in a puddle, your phone is going to be A-OK. -okay. I wouldn't go swimming with it though. That's maybe for the X Fold 3 Pro, but we'll talk about that next week. If you're someone that doesn't upgrade your phone every couple of years, foldable phones probably wouldn't have been the one for you. But recently with the OnePlus Open, the Xiaomi Mix Fold 3, and now the Vivo X Fold 3, I think you've got a four or five year phone there if you want it to be. Now, the OnePlus Open actually scored quite well in build quality. However, it lacked an IP rating of any form. So I'm giving a slight edge to the Vivo X Fold 3. However, it doesn't have dust protection. And, you know, if you ever wanted to go to a beach and get some nice photos with your foldable phone, that is some of the riskiest business you could take. So for that reason, overall build quality for a foldable is fantastic. But out of five, I have to give it three and a half. If any manufacturer can work out full IP68 water and dust resistance on a foldable, it would be game changing. Now, on to the next category, design. Yes, the most subjective category in any full review I do is design. So you're going to have to take the next couple of minutes with a grain of salt. However, there are some things that are undeniable. The Vivo X Fold 3 is the second thinnest device on the planet, while having the second biggest battery on the planet, only beaten by its big brother, the X Fold 3 Pro. 
where the Vivo X Fold 3 is the biggest in the in the world is with its displays. A 6.5 inch outer display and an 8.03 inch inner. Both running 120 hertz, both running 4,500 nits of peak brightness and both are 2K plus displays. You will struggle to find fault with the overall design of this phone. 10.2 millimeters, 219 grams, puts it firmly as the lightest foldable device in the world. And you know me, I love a circular camera bump on the rear and that's what the Vivo gives me. Yes, slightly off center if I'm honest, which might mess with someone's OCD, but I like that design aspect. And in this white color, while color is not specifically a weighty scoring, it's still part of design and this marble effect on this, the back cover glass, I love it. Now moving your way around the phone, there's stereo speakers, there's your usual cutouts for the USB-C antenna bands, an infrared port, no different to any other phone. But the fact that they're incorporating all of this typical stuff in a 4.7 millimeter unfolded design, yeah, hats off to Vivo, well done you. Design wise, I'm giving the Vivo X Fold 3 a 4 out of 5. Now before I move on to the next category being software, I do just want to kind of encapsulate the build quality and design because there's a few other things that we should cover and I'm not quite sure which category they would sit in. The scores still stand, but when we're talking about a 10.2 millimeter screen, you have to think about how that feels in the hand, ergonomically. And second to only the Honor Magic V2 as feeling like an actual candy bar device. Your Samsung S24 Ultra, your Xiaomi 14 Ultra, your iPhone 15 Pro Max are actually nearly as thick as the Vivo X Fold 3 folded. I actually think the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, because of its huge camera bump, is thicker than the Vivo X Fold 3 folded. So all of these comments I see about foldable phones are too bulky and heavy, you're just wrong. The X Fold 3 is lighter than every flagship candy bar phone I just mentioned. So, so far, after two categories, the X Fold 3 is on 7.5 out of 10 points. Now we're on to software. And I've done a dedicated software video on the Vivo X Fold 3. I love the Origin OS skin. One of the benefits of a Chinese ROM Vivo is that it comes with Origin OS. If you get a global Vivo, you're going to get Fun Touch. And it's, like, poor compared to Origin OS. Now, key features of the software, display out, so you can mirror your screen, you can plug it into a mini HDMI port and can use your phone mirrored, or you can enter Vivo's desktop mode. However, I haven't got that to work yet. I think you're going to, I don't know what you need. I don't know if it's a China or a global thing. But I can't get the Vivo desktop mode to work per se, but I can get my display to output on my TV. Now, multitasking on the Vivo is good. While not as good as the Z Fold 5 or the OnePlus Open, you can split screen horizontally and vertically. You can have two floating apps open at the same time. After figuring out how to do it, it's actually super straightforward and simple to multitask. And I've talked about this before, but the Origin kits that come pre-installed, voice recorder, infrared port, all the kits that I mentioned in that previous software video ring true as well. I think software's kind of difficult for any Chinese ROM because ultimately there's always that elephant in the room. As good as they can make the customization, as good as they can make some other features, it still lacks two of the biggest features of a global ROM fold device. Android Auto, connecting to your car seamlessly through wire or wireless, and smartwatch connectivity. Now I have mentioned before, I've got a full review of the Cospet M3 Tank Ultra, a smartwatch that I will be recommending to many, many people, if you've got slightly larger wrists. 
But other than that and a couple of other Chinese or proprietary smartwatches from Vivo, you are going to struggle. And when I say struggle, you're going to find it impossible to connect any new Wear OS or Samsung Galaxy wearable watch. It just will not happen. Even my OnePlus Watch 2, which I thought might sneak through because of the other chip and the Oppo partnership, but no, it, even it didn't connect. So that's always a consideration and it's always going to impact on the score. So if it's a standalone, how Origin OS software works, looks and feels, then it would be a high score. But I have to take off the compatibility. Now, 5G, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi 6, everything else just works seamlessly. There's no band 20 issues either with the Vivo. Some devices like the Xiaomi Mix Fold 3 had real issues with band 20 here in the UK. There's nothing like that you have to worry about with the Vivo. And that's obviously a big positive. But with the compatibility with Android Auto and smartwatch connectivity, I have to give software a 3 out of 5 on the Vivo. And now penultimate category, cameras. The Vivo X Fold 3 has a two times optical zoom lens, a 50 megapixel main and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. Now it's a Vivo phone and it's a Vivo flagship phone. So the cameras were always going to be good. What's blown me away though, is how good all the lenses are, including the two times optical. Now, this will be scored against the other foldables and other flagship phones. So don't worry if you think I'm being too biased. There's no way the X Fold 3 can achieve a high score in camera category. It's just lacking too much. But what I do want to get across is the Vivo X Fold 3 has one of the best camera setups on a foldable device. And we're going to talk about price soon, but for an unbelievably competitive price when you factor in the camera setup. So pictures look colourful, vibrant, which you can change in the settings if you want to. Portraits are second to none. I'm, I'm standing firm here. I think Vivo produced the best portrait images of any device. And as mentioned, here you can see that zoom. That is not potato-like. That is all from a two times optical zoom. It'll go 50 times hybrid, which again, isn't exactly horrific, but I think the sweet spot is that four to kind of eight X almost lossless. Now it is six times lossless zoom on this phone, but even up to 10 times. I mean, you can see here the no ball game sign. Yeah, really impressed with what Vivo can do. And then moving on to video, Android phones struggle with video sometimes. Stabilization, moving between lenses <laughs> during recording. The Vivo's <laughs> coping with it fine. Uh, and this doesn't phone. have the separate V2 chip inside that the X Fold 3 Pro has. It doesn't have the latest 8 Gen 3 chip, which brings it which brings with it more photo processing capabilities. Everything you're seeing is from, and it's important to remember this. Everything you're seeing outputted, including gaming, performance, all of that stuff is coming from a year old chip in the 8 Gen 2. And while that may be looked upon as, hold on, it's a year old chip. Yes, absolutely. And we'll talk about that in price. But I look at it to think, wow, even from a year old chip or an 18 month old chip, they're managed to do all this. So a real positive in the camera. And then the app itself, Unlike the Honor Magic V2, which lost points, the app itself is really easy to use. There's pro mode, there's all the different modes you could want, but the actual smoothness, the bringing up the Zeiss color lenses, all the different filters, the vintage mode that Ben's Gadget Reviews talks about all the time is there, all the different photographic styles. You can customize photos and videos to your heart content, to be honest. So overall camera experience from the app to the actual outputs and videos that come at the end has been great. Why this can't score higher, and I'll just explain. My point scoring system is based on all phones. It has to be. I can't have a separate category for foldables because there's only about 10 foldables on the planet. 
I have to make sure that includes all also because most people are only buying one phone. And for some people, camera is at the top of their list. It's their absolute must-haves. So I don't want to give the Vivo X Fold 3 or the OnePlus Open 5 out of 5 for cameras when people will think, oh, that must have the best camera going. It doesn't. We're talking about for a foldable here, but in line with all the other phones, the S24 Ultra, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, the Oppo X7 Ultra, they are truly ultra flagship cameras and they scored 4.5 or even 5 out of 5 in this category. So for that reason, when I compare it with other foldable phones in the overall big category, 3 out of 5, which is what I'm giving the Vivo X Fold 3, is still a great score. The only foldable in the top of my head that actually beats it was the OnePlus Open. And that's because it's got a 6x periscope zoom lens. And in some cases, the video and night mode was better than on the Vivo. So it's half a point behind the OnePlus Open for cameras, but 3 out of 5 takes us to 13.5 points going into the final round. Now the final round is price, and just to give you a reminder, last year the OnePlus Open scored 17.5 points. The Vivo needs 4 points to draw, 4.5 or 5 points to win. And I ain't going to leave you to the end of this category. I'm going to tell you right now. The score for the price on the Vivo X Fold 3 is 5 out of 5. It is rare for me to give 5 out of 5 in categories. Specifically the price category. But you need to hear me out. The Vivo X Fold 3 has really good cameras. Really good software. Really good build quality and really good design. All of that comes at a price tag of under £1,000. It's a foldable device, folks, with two fantastic displays. It's got the 8 Gen 2 chip, which ain't no slow coach, let me tell you. It's got a 5,500 power battery with 100 watt charging included in the box. It's got a premium case worth easily £50 if you were to buy it separately, included in the box. So yes, 5 out of 5 for price, it has to be. The half terabyte, 16 gigabytes of RAM version I went for is still under £1,000. Absolutely mind-blowing that Vivo have achieved this on the X Fold 3. Because again, in the, in the insular context of Vivo themselves, they started off with a huge bang in the X Fold series, but it was 315 grams and it cost about 1400 pounds. They then thinned things down slightly with the X Fold 2, but removed a periscope camera and only gave us two times optical and kept the price at around about 1300 pounds. So the fact that the Vivo X Fold 3, yes, only has a two times optical, but better process and better images than X Fold 2, but is now only 219 grams, 10.2 millimeters, and all for under a thousand pounds. That's 25%, 27% cheaper than the X Fold 2, with basically the same specs, but thinner and lighter, and a bigger battery, and faster charging. I don't know how Vivo have done it. I praise them. Absolutely praise them. Keep in mind, if you were actually in China and didn't have to import the phone, doing the conversion from Chinese currency to Great British pounds, you're actually looking at around £770 or something. Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't compute in my head that this foldable phone is half the price of an iPhone 15 Pro Max when you do the currency conversion. Anyway, so that's been the five categories. And as you already know, the Vivo X Fold 3 has scored 18.5 out of a potential 25. Please keep in mind, the absolute pinnacle of my review list so far 
has been the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. They scored 21.5 points. The Vivo X Fold 3 is only 3 points behind. And for a foldable phone, yeah. As mentioned at the very top of the video, we have come from the Samsung Z Fold original all the way to something like this. And I am, I am here for it. So, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash like and hit the subscribe button. Quite a lot of you watching have still not hit the subscribe button yet. I know you're tempted, but try and get me to 25,000 subscribers by the end of May and 30,000 at least by the end of this year. And if you've enjoyed this review and you want to support the channel, buy me a coffee, kicks back, a bit of a tip to me for all my hard work. Until next time, where I will be discussing the X Fold 3 Pro in a mini review, take care.